We've been talking about what happens to verse speaking when we actually get into performance. And of course we know that for lots of people, the first and sometimes the only contact that they have with Shakespeare is via the purple passages that are taught in schools and often quoted. Uh, and of course the point is that those purple passages uh, are all integrally part of the place from which they've been extrapolated. And although there might be in the purple speech uh, a quantity of imagery and of highly coloured language that's made it famous, of course there are also demands of character and of meaning within the given scene. Now, Pat Stewart, he's played Ina Barbus twice uh, in, in the last few years. Um, and it's Ina Barbus who has the very famous description of the meeting between Antony and Cleopatra on the river of Sidness. Uh, now, Patrick, first of all, did it in 1973 and uh, is also currently playing the part. So, Patrick, here's how you did it in 1973. I'll tell you. The barge she sat in like a burnished throne, burned on the water. The poop was beaten gold, purple sails, and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them. The oars were silver, which to the tune of flutes kept stroke, and made the water which they beat to follow faster as amorous of their strokes. For her own person, it beggared all description. She did lie in her pavilion, cloth of gold of tissue, or picturing that Venus, where we see the fancy outwork nature. On each side her stood pretty dimpled boys, like smiling cupids with divers coloured fans, whose wind did seem to glow the delicate cheeks which they did cool, and what they undid, did. Do you feel differently about it? Uh, or, or are you doing different things with the speech? Yes. Uh, quicker. First of all, I'd like to know who that good-looking young fellow was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much quicker now. And uh, after a gap of uh, six years, that's what alarms me most, to see uh, how each image, um, each uh, adjective was dwelt on. And it was correct then, because we were uh, showing a man, an old sweat, an old military man, uh, re returning to a Rome which he felt was sterile <clears throat> and uh, intellectual, and uh, needed to impress Mycenaeus and Agrippa with an experience which, because they hadn't had it, would have somehow made them poorer in life. But there was about all of that the sense that perhaps none of it was true. He was ripping them off. It was uh, Traveller's Tales. Um, but of course that was also a reaction to that particular kind of Rome. Now this year we have a very different Rome. We have a Rome which is alive, very youthful and very, very passionate, very volatile Rome. And so uh, I need to, to respond to that in a different way. It's interesting, you know, as we've talked and talked, we started out by first of all, in a very technical way, isolating verse, but in the last few minutes we've been talking increasingly about acting and uh, the response to the verse from the emotional point of view. Well, what is different about it now, I feel, is that I have to... I feel a need to tell this story about Egypt, a need which comes from a man who has, believes he has shared in some kind of mystery, something which is almost a dream, that there is about Egypt, as compared to Rome, a spiritual quality, um, 
an indefinable something which he tries to reach out and touch. So that, um, uh, when I said just there, I talked about the winds being lovesick with the sails because they were so perfumed, it was gross and exaggerated. I think that Ina Barbus believes that there was a scent, a smell, a movement in the air. It really happened, something which created vibrations in him, that um, the women were like mermaids. There was a transformation on that river which lifted him, all of the observers, and obviously Anthony too, out of the real life into something very much deeper, much more profound. And as at the end of the speech he says he will leave her never because that one experience changed Anthony for all time and changed Ina Barber for all time as well. And the point is that that bit of language is capable of both readings, uh, and that if we do persuade you to do Ina Barbas in another five years' time, it's perfectly possible that there will be a third version that you will be able to talk about just as articulately and to re refer to the text. Perfectly possible. This, I feel the one most important thing about Shakespeare is that there is, and we have said this before, but I'll say it again because it's worth repeating, there is no one key that will open one door and reveal Shakespeare to you. There are many, many keys and many, many doors. And that's the one privileged piece of knowledge that acting Shakespeare has given me.